1981, I was appointed Chief of Police of the City of Cleveland, Tennessee. In fact, I became the youngest Chief of Police in the State of Tennessee when that occurred. That I felt like that I, I didn't have to have anybody else's advice, anybody else's guidance. I just got too big in my pants, if you will. There's politics involved, and I was very bitter. I was a bit mad at me too because I'd, I'd given them some things to throw at me. I'd resigned as chief of police and begin a, a position as a security consultant with a private company. I've been headlines prior to that. I made two successful uh, business calls and was driving back toward Chattanooga. I pulled on out, not noticing a car that was doing about 60 miles an hour uh, in the left lane and collided with me and my driver's door. Uh, drove my car over the embankment and I was trapped in it and was there until uh, the fire department and medics arrived and they removed me from the car and according to their reports they found uh, brain tissue and, and blood and spinal fluid flowing out my left ear. They put my skull back together and then put me in ICU where they dealt with the fact that I had 13 broken ribs, uh, punctured lung, my heart was swelling. So they put me on a ventilator, which uh, kept me alive for the next uh, several days. On the 14th night in ICU, I remember becoming awake and conscious and looking around and seeing that I was connected to a lot of machinery, a lot of tubes. Uh, but there was no one else in the room except I felt the presence of Jesus Christ in that room with me. I felt he was there with his hand stretched out to me and I, I assumed he was going to take me to heaven. And I remember not praying but talking to Jesus. And I remember those words verbatim. I said, Lord, uh, you're going to take me to heaven, aren't you? There'll be no more hurt, no more anger, no more pain over there. I said, Lord, just, just take me on. Just, you just take care of my family and I'm ready to go. And I can't describe to you the peace that I had when I went back to sleep to die, expecting to wake up again in his arms in heaven. It's the most peaceful feeling I've ever felt. He had something else in mind, however, because the 19th day, the doctor came and made his rounds, but this time he came in, he simply lifted up my arm where there was a tube inserted for drainage and he began to pull it out. I said, Doc, what are you doing? He said. Son, we can't send you home with this tube in your chest. And I said, you mean I'm going home? His words verbatim, he said, son, it's a miracle, but we're gonna send you home. I believe that night I laid down that anger and bitterness in that ICU room. When, he, when I said that, there'll be no more hurt, no more anger, no bit more bitterness. I believe that's what was going on in that ICU room. I've been the most powerful man in the city of Cleveland. And there at the hospital, I uh, became dependent upon other people to bathe me, to, to feed me, to, to take me to the restroom. And I had people ask me, uh, do you think God caused your accident? I don't know if he caused it or just used it. I'm just thankful that it, that it worked out the way it did. In order to know what I know today, have the relationship I have now, I would go back and go through that accident again to be where I am now.